Welcome back, folks, to the Schaefer's Market Mashup. This is your host, Patrick Martin. It's been a busy week making this guide. I felt like Jim Carrey in Bruce Almighty, answering his emails as God, just pew, 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 typing everything out, getting it all organized. Uh, but I won't dilly-dally. I'm sure you don't want to hear my rants about sports right now, so we'll get right to it. The Dow, S&P 500, and NASDAQ all turned in some sizable weekly wins on Friday. It was the Dow's best week since June 5th. Um, and since then, the Dow and S&P 500 both went streaking, logging seven-day win streaks. Uh, that was the Dow's best win streak since September of last year. Uh, those win streaks were snapped on Tuesday, but as of recording today on Thursday, all three benchmarks were just heading towards eking out weekly wins. Taking a quick look at the CBOE Volatility Index, ticker VIX, considered, quote-unquote, Wall Street's fear gauge. It continues to distance itself from the 24 area, uh, which noted in Schaefer's Senior Vice President of Research Todd Salamone's Monday Morning Outlook is double last year's low. In this week's Monday Morning Outlook, Todd thinks the move below 24 doesn't necessarily mean risk has dropped, uh, and it it's instead suggests the S&P 500's break above positive territory, uh, which happened last week, uh, crossing above its 2019 close, that can be sustained because this former area of resistance can now act as support. And with this week, the S&P 500 up 4% above its year-to-date break-even. So far, Todd's words have rung true. Once again, more evidence that you got to subscribe to that Monday morning outlook in your inbox by 9.30 every Monday. It'll get you ready for the week ahead. Let's talk TikTok. I personally have resisted getting this video sharing social network app but I've seen enough videos in the past year to know what it's all about. It's incredibly popular. My niece has it. A bunch of my more popular, more creative, cooler friends have it. It's basically the evolution of Vine. Or maybe a better way to describe it is Vine's weirder, quirkier cousin. Uh, but it has the same components as Vine that make it popular. It's a vertical video, micro content, viral hit maker. For now, because last week, President Trump signed an executive order prohibiting transactions with TikTok and its parent, China-owned ByteDance, if the company does not reach a deal to divest it in 45 days. No other real specifics of the order were given, but the main reasoning behind the executive order come from data privacy concerns, especially considering TikTok is China-based and you can connect the dots as to why this administration is leery of such an app. However, earlier this month, Microsoft, ticker MSFT, was reportedly in talks to purchase TikTok, of course, eyeing that sweet, sweet advertising revenue that makes these social media apps so darn popular. Microsoft roared to a record high on the news, uh, but has since pulled back because it's not exactly certain what Trump's executive order would do to a potential deal. Is it trying to get leverage for a deal? Would it completely negate one? Nobody can really tell. It's all up in the air for now, which, let's be honest, that's basically the theme for 2020 in general. But we can get to something that we do know, and that's options activity. In the last five days, the November 220 and 240 strike calls have seen the largest increase in open interest. So with MSFT last seen trading at $208.94, call buyers are banking on some big gains from the tech giant in the next three months. And earlier this week, we have a new suitor for TikTok. Twitter, ticker TWTR, has reportedly expressed interest in buying the video sharing platform. Many people are questioning if Twitter has the capital to outbid Microsoft, but another competitor 
makes it that much more interesting as to what will happen with this app. It's almost like social media bachelor except with videos. I don't know. There could be a Microsoft date, there could be a Twitter date, or just nothing and it's banned indefinitely. This That's a terrible analogy. Moving on. Um, the news didn't really spark much price movement from Twitter stock on Monday or Tuesday, but there is notable open interest activity going on at the September 42 call. So Twitter was last seen on Thursday trading at $38.11. Buyers of these calls are eyeing more upside for the social media stock in the next month. Let's go to our weekly vaccine update. There is a lot going on. So I'm going to split the vaccine updates into two parts. Since there's so much to report on, it take me practically an hour to go over them all one by one. Today, we will cover Moderna in Russia. On August 12th, the U.S. government announced the purchase of 100 million doses of Moderna's potential COVID-19 vaccine for a cool $1.5 billion. Moderna's vaccine is in the final stage of testing, and there are rumors that this supply deal could be the first of many. Other countries could be getting in on this, and it essentially confirms Moderna as a front runner in this great vaccine race, joining the likes of AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Novavax with all government deals as a part of Operation Warp Speed. That was my Dr. Evil voice there. Operation Warp Speed. There we go. Uh, for Moderna, ticker MRNA, the August 72 call is home to the largest increase in open interest in the last five trading days. Moderna was last seen trading at $67.96, so buyers of these calls are expecting a push higher from the drug stock in the next week when the contracts expire. Again, that August 72 call will expire on the 21st on Friday next week. It's also worth noting that MRNA is up 250% in 2020. That's worthy of a woo. And it's just these video game numbers uh, can be seen from nearly every drug stock involved in the vaccine race to nobody's surprise. Meanwhile, earlier this week, the vaccine race was temporarily thrown for a loop after Russian President Vladimir Putin gave regulatory approval for the world's first coronavirus vaccine. So, if you had your bets on Mother Russia being the first country to approve one, you can head over and collect your bets right now. But, hold the phone folks, it's Russia, so there always has to be an asterisk. Uh, apparently, Russia's vaccine has not entered phase 3 trials, which at least in the US requires studies of roughly 30,000 people. Plus, Russian scientists haven't published any information or data about how the vaccine has performed in animal tests, in early stage human studies. Typical Russia, there's this blanket over any kind of information to the public. Um, the news is definitely eye-raising, but of course the jury is still out as to the efficacy of this vaccine. If anything, it should remind investors that Anything could happen. It's a race with multiple winners. Russia could get there first, but then two more companies in the U.S. could cross the finish line with better results. They are working on a vaccine in India. Everyone is working towards this goal. So I've thought of a better way to articulate this. It's not a vaccine race. It's more of a class project. It's like who can turn in the best model for the science fair. There's no deadline. It's who can complete the project to, with the best results. So that's a interesting way to frame it going forward, which of course, new updates are coming in weekly, and I'll have some more for you next week. Let's talk stock splits. All the kids are doing it. All the cool kids are doing it, I should say. Uh, you've seen them in the news more and more in the last two weeks. Apple got the ball rolling on July 31st, announcing a four for one stock split. It's fifth of all time. Essentially, what a stock split is, is one share is split into multiple shares with no change to the total value of the investor's holdings. It's simply broken down into more individual units. 
Uh, this lowers a company's share price uh, and puts the stock within reach of smaller individual investors. Overall, it's a good thing for the company's liquidity and creates more demand for the stock. Apple hit a record high, by the way, after its earnings report and stock split announcement. Uh, construction supply company Trex announced its own stock split a few days later, but the bigger news came this past Wednesday, August 12th, when Tesla came through with its five-for-one stock split. So is this becoming a thing now? It's hard to say. Jim Cramer did say on his Mad Money show earlier that called on 10 companies to join Apple and Tesla in executing stock splits, saying, and I quote, the size of the price tag matters with this young investing crowd, and you want this no commission paying crowd in your stock. This week, we at Schaefer's ran two studies that profile stock splits. The first was Chart of the Week, written by fearless leader Bernie Schaefer. Bernie pointed out on Sunday, using data compiled by senior quantitative analyst Rocky White, that Apple, ticker AAPL, historically encounters negative returns 126 days after announcing a stock split. And then, diving deeper and broader at the same time, Rocky White later, in his Indicator of the Week, noted that it doesn't really mean much going forward when looking at 240 stock splits since 2010 yielded one, two, and three-month returns that didn't say much either way about how stocks perform. There wasn't any clear trend to the bullish or to the bearish. However, however, factoring in sentiment, stocks that analysts were bearish towards tended to perform better after a stock split. In Rocky's words, maybe the stock split was the catalyst needed to spur buying in these stocks that were looked on unfavorably in the analyst community. That is particularly helpful to note for Tesla, ticker TSLA, which according to Thomson Reuters Icon's analyst data has 17 of 21 brokerages with hold or worse ratings. Keep that in mind when you look at how Tesla will perform in the next one, two, and three month windows. Whew. Okay, that's a lot. We'll cut it there. Thank you for listening. And a reminder once more to stay safe and wear that darn mask everywhere you go. If you want to read more about the articles I've highlighted this week, whether that be Monday Morning Outlook, Chart of the Week, Indicator of the Week, subscribe. You'll have them in your inbox, give you all the edge you need when you're looking at your investing plan. Again, don't forget to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. We're all over the place and we're going to keep growing. Uh, if you want any specific topics covered, you want to hop on and chat with me, let me know. Email me at pmartin at sir-inc.com. Let's get something set up. Thanks again and have a great weekend. Thank <laughs> you.